Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to give you guys an update on my North Brazilian True Red Tail Boas. I want to show you all my animals I have from this uh, really cool underrated form of True Red Tail Boa. And so you hear a lot about the Suriname and the Peruvian True Red Tails. You don't see the North Brazils nearly as much. Um, they have a dedicated following among those who know them, but they're generally less common and less well known. And, but they do have a very distinctive beauty all their own. So overall, I would say they probably resemble the most a Suriname uh, true red tail, but they definitely do have some differences. The first thing you'll notice and what I look for in a good specimen of North Brazilian true red tail boa is they just have this overall really dirty look. There's a lot of background markings and smudges and freckles. The shape of the saddles can be somewhat irregular and just a really cool wild look to them. The heads usually have a lot of markings on them, a lot of eyelash markings and spots and freckles. You know, definitely not a clean looking boa and I really like this type of look in a boa. So the saddles generally are peaked, although usually they're not like perfectly symmetrically peaked. They kind of have this, you know, somewhat asymmetrical peaking like this animal and they have a lot of markings between the saddles. The background color is a little bit different than the Suriname or the Guiana. They typically have this kind of light yellowish grayish color. Um, and then the tail typically it's not quite as long or as red as a Suriname true red tail but typically they can have a nice long red tail. Some bloodlines don't have they have you know, kind of a shorter, more brick red tail. But this is my female. This one is uh, about five and a half years old and I'm actually breeding her for the first time this year or attempting to breed her. She was produced by basically Boas by Mike Weitzman. And this is you know, the epitome of what a North Brazilian red tail boa should look like. Just a really beautiful breathtaking animal. The size of these animals is a little bit smaller than the Suriname or Peruvians. This animal is probably just under six feet and she's probably not going to get too much bigger than this. Uh, but just, you know, really cool looking boa. You can see she's really holding on. She's got that, you know, muscle tone of a true red tail. Very strong animal. Likes to hold on securely. Um, cool animal to handle though. She's not trying to get away. She's just kind of looking around. Uh, and then you can see all of the markings on her belly. But that's what you should look for, as far as I'm concerned, in a true red tail boa from North Brazil, is this, you know, the beauty of the background markings and, uh, you know, this, this really wild look. This is my male uh, North Brazilian boa. So these guys, as I mentioned, they're from Mike Weitzman from Basically Boas. And this is a mixture of different bloodlines. It's the uh, Bissette crossed with the Renfro Evans and Dyer bloodline. So, nice mix and you know they produce this beautiful looking animal so this male is also about five and a half years old he's a little bit smaller than the female he's maybe five feet long but overall i think his colors are even nicer he's got this beautiful yellowish tannish color and you can see all the contrast with his darker saddles and beautiful red tail um, so like i said i'm breeding these or attempting to breed these this year so far it looks pretty good although I really can't say for sure I'm gonna have babies don't want to jinx myself but hopeful that I might have some babies of these beautiful North Red North Brazilian true red tail boas you know sometime late this summer or early in the fall um, and you know the male like I said overall I think he's probably a little more colorful and contrasty than the female and I have one more pair of North Brazilian red tails this is a 2016 pair produced by Vin Russo and these animals are they're a year younger than the pair I just showed you so you can see they're a little bit smaller um, overall that you know their look is pretty similar they have this kind of yellowish tan background color and really dirty look and kind of asymmetrical peak saddles these guys have a shorter tail you can see yeah, I don't want to get tagged, but the tail is quite a bit shorter. It's not quite as bright of a red color. Um, but overall, you know, beautiful looking boa, high contrast. 
when I first got this pair, they were really hissy and snappy, and they, I couldn't handle them at all. They just constantly were hissing and striking. But in the last couple of years, they have calmed down quite a bit, although the female seems to be a little bit jumpy right now. Um, the other pair actually have been really docile. They've never been hissy or you know they've ever struck at me so sometimes you just have these individual differences but it's good to have you know variability in behaviors it you know tells me that I have genetic variability in my animals uh, which is good for their long-term success in captivity and you know when I got these animals my goal was to have two different bloodlines and then I could cross animals uh, from each bloodline and you know generate unrelated babies um, so hopefully these guys will be in the breeding rotation starting next year when they get to be about five and a half years old uh, and they look like they're on track to reach that so um, we'll just have to see how my breeding goes this year which you know might influence whether I breed this uh, Ben Russo pair of North Brazil true red tail boas next year. This is the last North Brazil true red tail in my group. This is my 2016 male from Vin Russo. And overall, he's similar to the female I just showed you. You can see he's got some saddles which are connected up on his neck there, leading to kind of a striping effect. And overall, he's got kind of blocky looking saddles. Uh, unfortunately, he's in shed right now. He's normally much brighter colored than this. You can see his tail looks a little bit drab. And as I mentioned, although these guys do have a shorter tail than my other pair, they're generally brighter. He's just in shed right now. You know, one thing I've noticed with these North Brazilians, especially this pair, is that they're really susceptible to uh, incomplete sheds if you don't have the humidity right. And, you know, I, when I got these guys, I had several times I would have to soak them, you know, to remove their complete shed. But, you know, since then I've been using a more humid substrate and I also spray it down a lot, especially when he's going into shed. So I'll spray it down with a spray bottle several times a week just to keep it really nice and humid. And I haven't had any issues with the shedding. So as I mentioned, hopefully this guy will be ready to breed next year. Eventually I'll be crossing this bloodline with my bloodline from basically boas and hope to establish a nice uh, population of the North Brazilian red tails in captivity. And as I mentioned, these guys are harder to find than the Surinams or even the Peruvians, but they're definitely worth checking out if you're into red tails. You want something a little bit different that you don't see every day. So I hope this was helpful. As always, if you have any questions about these North Brazilian red tails or anything else with keeping and breeding boas, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.